Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to be doing a video on backups, uh, specifically with the Rustic open source backup solution. Um, the reason I've opted to go with Rustic, and I use it myself, and um, I, I have it on a few client environments that um, uh, have a requirement of going to multiple backup destinations, um, is precisely because of that. Um, it supports natively without having to do extra scripting and uh, which can be quite messy and it um, obviously it's open source so I don't have to pay for licensing on it neither do my clients um, so because it does all that natively it's a very attractive solution while at the same time from an audit perspective it uh, encrypts your store your data at rest and also in transit um, it also does versioning through snapshots so you are not consuming an unnecessary amount of space on your backup solution um, or backup um, yeah the backup solution you're working off of by having multiple identical copies rustic is smart enough to see and compare the source and your backup uh, destination and if the file hasn't changed it's not going to copy it again but if it does it will take that and it will keep it as a versioned copy uh, therefore saving space on your systems um, other things that are really cool about it is that you can have multiple keys and I'm not necessarily going to get into that yet. Uh, I might towards the end of these of this video series. Um, today's video I'm going to be focusing on local storage so you're going to see me talking about those commands. Although for S3 and SFTP I will amend this document as we go ahead and show you what the differences are. I'm gonna I'm glossing over that in this PDF for S3 and SFTP um, because you're missing things like the environment variable that you'd set up, uh, creating the bucket itself, um, or for SFTP creating the uh, SSH key that you would use. These are things that for the purposes of showing the proof of concept aren't really all that useful. Okay. So, uh, without further ado, I'm just going to show you the vid the um, PDF document at a high level, and then I'll go ahead and start the uh, proof of concept on this machine here. That's my test machine. So, uh, as you can see, your server is in production. You choose to back up to S3, an S3 bucket. You also did a local storage, and you wanted to do an offsite as well for SFTP. Um, so this already is a fairly strong backup solution if you did all three of them at the same time. Um, now, the first thing you need to do is you need to initialize that backup. And the way you do that, the command is the same in all three. The only thing that changes, and you're going to see this as a common thread as I go through this video. And again, I'm going to be talking just about local storage, but you'll be able to look at the SFTP and S3. The only thing that changes is you tell it what backup protocol you're using, the path to it, and the directory structure underneath it. Um, same thing with SFTP. You tell it, hey, you're going to do SFTP. This is the account. This is the host that you're connecting to, and this is the path. Again, I'm going to be focusing on local storage from this point forward, but you'll see the commands for S3 and SFTP in here as well uh, as I go down this, um, this PDF document. Okay, um, so like I said, the first thing you want to do is you want to initialize your repository. And the first thing it's going to ask you when you do that is create a password. Remember that password. If you forget that password, I cannot stress this enough, you will lose your backups. You will They will be encrypted. You will not be able to get them back. So keep a, keep a backup of that key somewhere else. Do not put it on the system itself. Um, and then have multiple version, multiple backups of that key so that you are able to um, log into these snapshots and a repository and retrieve data from these snapshots. Okay. Um, this is the command to do the backup. So rustic R, which is pointed to the path of the repository, which is what you have here. And I, I like to add verbose so you can see what it's doing. This is the backup command, and it, then you can choose however many directories and files you want to back up. So you would just put a space between each one of those. And I'll show you how to do that here. I'll have multiple backups, I'm sorry, multiple directories, and you'll see what that looks like. All right. Uh, another neat thing about Rustic is that uh, you can um, 
keep an, uh, a running inventory of the latest backups as you deem necessary. So um, again, in this in this system or in this PDF, I'm showing you how to keep the last seven backups. So if you run this command, it'll delete anything older than the last seven days. But you can modify this to show you the last or to keep the last seven days and you know the last two months and then the last year of backups and it'll automatically automatically go through the snapshot repository and delete anything that does not fall into that structure of backups that you need um, very useful again I'm just using you show I'm just showing you how to do the keep daily seven but you can really change this and I might show you guys a sample of what I do uh, again later on in the video series um, and I also wanted to point out in the video series, although I'm doing Linux right now, I will do a video of how to do how to use Rustic on Windows and how to do backup, how to backup to these three different storage platforms. So this will be a longer video series than the ones that I've done up until now. Um, but I think it's going to be very useful uh, for anyone that's uh, looking to use this. Um, another ca another thing to, to add here, I was going to say caveat, but it's not a caveat. Um, the, you, with regards to S3, everyone automatically thinks of AWS. AWS is the biggest name in the game, but it is not by far the only one. There are other ones that are more cost effective. Um, anything from, say, DreamHost, Dream Compute, uh, Backblaze B2. I'm not affiliated with any of them, although I use all of these for various clients and myself, they all do the same job. Uh, it really comes down to your preference and whatever your budget is and whatever works for your organization or for your clients if you're also an MSP. Uh, Azure is another one actually that I, I didn't say, but it's just as big a name of game. Um, all right, so that's forgetting old snapshots. Listing all the snapshots, um, Rustic-R, Path to Repository, Snapshots. All right, and that'll show you the entire list. And you'll see when I do my proof of concept here what that looks like. I don't have a ton of snapshots on there right now just because this is a test system. Uh, but as the video series goes, you'll end up seeing me use the snapshot command and you'll see daily more and more snapshots added on there. Okay. Uh, the check command, this is just as, as it implies, it checks the validity of the snapshots themselves. Very useful if you're doing a, um, a, a script that's checking to make sure that your snapshots are in good order. If you see anything other than it's all good, it'll tell you what you need to do or what you should look at doing. Um, the only thing I've seen is if a uh, repository is locked, you can unlock it. Um, ironically, I don't know how to induce that artificially, um, but it does show you the commands that you could use. And I definitely recommend that you um, look at the rustic documentation as to how to how to use that okay and um as i was showing you this is uh this is now showing you how to look at all the contents inside of a snapshot very useful uh, if you're looking to restore from a snapshot that you can choose to either restore a single file or an entire directory path um, so this would be very useful to see what's in there so that you can make a determination and then lastly, how to do a restore. This is the command structure to do that. I will show you how to use this um, in a test here and we'll go from there, okay? So let's go ahead and go to slide two here. We're gonna create a backup repository. So I'm gonna do rustic and init dash repo. And I'm going to my path here and I'm gonna call it backup underscore test. And then the password is test. Again, I don't recommend you doing that, but that's what I'm creating. There we go. And as you can see here, it's reminding you, keep note of that password. If you forget that password, I cannot stress it enough, you will lose access to this data. There is no known way to recover it, and I don't expect there to ever be one because that would cause audit issues, okay? And if we do an LS here, uh, oh, I called it EPO. Uh, is that what I did? Yeah, let me EPO. I don't know why I did that. So let me get rid of that. I'm going to do it again. So I make a directory backup underscore test. And then rustic init and backup test. There we 
There we go. There's our snapshots. Oh, you know what it is, guys. Sorry, I am not looking at what I'm doing here properly. My apologies. I'm gonna get rid of this just so it's nice and clean. It's dash dash two dashes. And there it is. Yep, my apologies, guys. Um, I just wasn't catching what I was doing in, in my document here. So we have a repository. Let's go ahead and do a snapshots here to see what's in there. Obviously, we won't see anything. But you'll see that it opens it. <clears throat> And obviously there's nothing in there, but it shows that we were able to connect and, 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 and work with it. So let's go ahead and create our first backup. So rustic-r. And we're gonna go ahead and select our path again. Backup underscore test. And then uh, verbose backup. And now here's where we tell it what to backup. So, I'm going to choose to back up my WireGuard VPN. And I want to go ahead and back up this Rustic Video Super Important. So, Rustic Video Super Important. Asking for my password. And there it goes. So, it created our backup. We're good to go. If we do our snapshot now, there it is. You see the two directories, we see our date, the snapshot ID, and you'll see why this is important in a moment. Okay. So let's say I wasn't paying attention, you know. Um, and I or one of my sysadmins or the client went and did an RM and they deleted the rustic video super important. And before we do that, I'm just gonna show you there's something in there. There it is. So we have this MKV file and this test123 file. So somebody wasn't paying attention and they did an RM. Rustic video is super important because uh, it is a directory. I gotta do dash RF. It's gone. What do we do? Oh, hold on. There we go. Sorry, I didn't finish that. There we go. It's gone. We have. Um, lost that data. How do we get it back? So let's go to, um, where is this? List snapshot content. Um, and, I'm, and the reason I'm, I'm going to do this is so number one, I'm going to, I'm going to do the snapshots, which you've seen me do multiple times at this point. And then I'm going to show you how to do the second command, which is to list the content. So let's do rustic dash R backup underscore test and then I'm doing snapshots there's our directory structure so now we're going to do rustic ls long and then the snapshot ID there's only one in here but if there's multiple you'd see it and you know what I'll show you what that looks like with another backup the backup here that I did here there's multiple snapshots there I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Oh, right. I have to do dash R for the repository. W card, backup underscore test. And there we go. So, as you can see, it has all the files, showing me all the files for my WireGuard directory, it's showing it for my home. And there's that super important one. We want to recover this thing. So we know that snapshot has what we need. And again, if there's multiple of them, you could go through each one of them to find the snapshot that was important to you. Um, obviously, I only have one here right now. And actually, let me show you what it looks like through this one here that has multiple backups on it. Um, snapshots.
There we go. See, so you have multiple backups. It's showing you the date, the host I did it on, the snapshot ID, as you can see it's different, and the directories that I'm backing up on each one of these snapshots. Okay. Let's go back to the one I was working on. Okay, so, oh. all right, so let's do a restore. So we wanna restore the entire directory. So what we'll do is rustic-r, we're gonna do our path, and it's gonna be backup underscore test. The snapshot ID, we only have one, but again, if you saw here, I had multiple, if I had to pick from one of those. Um, Again, that comes in handy if you have, say, the same file, multiple versions of it where um, people have modified it. Um, so you could go back to these snapshots and pick the specific version you want to restore. Um, that, so that comes in very handy, as you can imagine. Um, I'm only doing the one backup right now, um, which is not really a problem. So I pick my snapshot ID. Actually, before that, it's restore. Target, temp, include, there we go, test, oh, there's my password, okay. Sorry guys. So if I look here, see how it restored the entire directory. And there is the directory that I just deleted and you see the two files are there. And the other neat thing about this is it actually retains the permission, see? So let's go ahead and restore that now and move it to home, and that's where it was, there we go. Our files are now there, and they're saved. Um, essentially, Rustic is really that simple to use. Uh, the commands are quite intuitive. Um, like I said, the next part of the video series, I'm gonna show you how to do this for S3 and for SFTP. And eventually I'll move into how to do it for Windows. Um, and if there's any other part of this that you find interesting, I will definitely look at adding that in here and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, if you find these video series useful, please drop a comment um, and subscribe. Um, any, and of course, if you want to um, directly assist us with this and, and the creation of this content, um, we more than we're more than happy to encourage any donations to us. We do it through cryptocurrency at the moment, um, and that's greatly appreciated. And lastly, if you have any questions as a client and or a prospective client, and you want us to either um, discuss with you how to do these sorts of backups for your systems, um, or if you're looking for something else, because uh, we do have other backup solutions that we use. Again, it depends on, on, on a client. Uh, please f feel free to reach out, and we'll be more than happy to work with you guys. Everyone have yourselves a good day. Bye-bye.